Hello doctors, I am Dr. Siddharth Gupta, I am an orthopedic surgeon. In the last few videos, we have discussed about the expected image based questions, the strategy for NEET PG examination and the 19 dot theory. I hope those videos were beneficial to you. Few students have asked uh, me for discussing hip dislocation and the controversy regarding the favor that is flexion, abduction, external rotation and father. When to choose favor, when to choose father and how to solve the MCQs. So I'll be resolving that query for you and I hope after seeing this video the questions on hip dislocation will be a child's play for you. Friends, before we discuss hip dislocation, we should be knowing what is hip joint. We should have a gross idea of the anatomy. Hip joint consists of femur, that is the head of the femur, this part, and the acetabulum, that is this part, acetabulum. Now, hip joint is formed between these two surfaces, between these two surfaces, the acetabulum and the acetabulum and the femoral head. Anything that can lead to loss of contact or loss of congruity between the two surfaces is called as dislocation. Is called as dislocation. Dislocation classically is of three types. Anterior dislocation, posterior dislocation and central. Central dislocation will be somewhere where I have shown a black dot on my palm will be central fracture dislocation. Now why I am calling central dislocation as fracture dislocation because for femoral head to dislocate centrally it has to break this part of the bone and come to lie in the perineum where my palm with a black dot is there. Where my palm with a black dot is there. So central dislocation is actually a central fracture dislocation but due to historical due to historical reasons we have been calling it central dislocation only but central dislocation is actually a misnomer so it is a central fracture dislocation let's be very clear let's talk about them one by one most of, the most of the hip dislocations are posterior dislocations. Most of the hip dislocations are posterior dislocation. And the mechanism of injury that is classically described is of a dashboard injury. Classically described is of a dashboard injury. That is a patient sitting on a driving seat or on the front seat of the car. The car collides and hits his and hits the knee of the patient and the femur is pushed posteriorly something like this something like this it is pushed posteriorly that is towards the gluteal region that is towards the gluteal region now because it is being pushed posteriorly imagine the imagine all of you sitting in a car on the front seat the hip is flexed when it is pushed posteriorly, it is internally rotated, internally rotated and adducted, adducted. So flexion, adduction and internal rotation that is called as father, father. Whenever there is father, a classical presentation for posterior dislocation and because the head of the femur is going posteriorly in the gluteal region, it is climbing up like this, there is shortening there is shortening so father with shortening is posterior hip dislocation even if shortening is not given and just father is given just mark posterior hip dislocation without any doubt now we imagine the second condition that is the anterior anterior dislocation of the femoral head that is towards the groin or towards the pubic region or towards the crouch area how does it take place the classical mechanism described is that a person traveling in two boats a person traveling in two boats so just imagine that one of the limbs of the patient is on one boat and the other limb is on the other boat the other boat moves forward like this 
pulls his limb like this there is flexion 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 and it comes out so there is flexion abduction and external rotation flexion abduction and external rotation faber always remember faber is anterior dislocation faber is anterior dislocation so father posterior faber anterior just remember this for your lifetime whenever there is given patient with road traffic accident with flexion abduction external rotation mark anterior dislocation without doubt in posterior dislocation we talk that there is a shortening why because the femoral head is climbing up in anterior dislocation there will be in anterior dislocation there will be lengthening of the limb why because due to gravity the femoral head will come to lie down will, will come to lie down or it will sink down so it will appear as if the limb has lengthened it will appear as if the limb limb has lengthened apart from anterior dislocation of the hip there is no condition there is no condition of the hip that leads to lengthening when there, whenever there is lengthening whenever you see the word lengthening always think of anterior dislocation always think of anterior dislocation okay now we come to the central dislocation or central fracture dislocation what happens is this femoral head pierces the medial wall of the acetabulum and comes to lie somewhere here where i have shown with a black dot in my palm where i have shown with a black dot in my palm so this femoral head is neither going into the gluteal region is neither coming towards the crouch region it is going into the true perineum it is going into the true perineum where lies the urinary bladder the rectum etc now the head of posterior dislocation is palpable in the gluteal region the head of anterior dislocation will be towards the pubic region or the crouch area the head of central dislocation will be palpable central dislocation head will be palpable in the per rectal examination central dislocation head will be palpable in the per rectal examination why because it is going into the perineum near the urinary bladder always remember when you are palpating per rectally prostate etc how do you palpate per rectally so the head is going in that region only that is why in central dislocation the head is palpable per rectally or per rectal examination if you feel the head you should mark without doubt that it is central dislocation so summarizing father flexion adduction internal rotation with shortening posterior dislocation head palpable in gluteal region posterior dislocation anterior dislocation lengthening flexion abduction external rotation faber anterior dislocation associated with lengthening central dislocation shortening will be there because lengthening occurs only in the anterior dislocation and the head will be palpable in the per rectal examination head will be palpable in the per rectal examination now i would briefly like to discuss pipkin's classification pipkin classification is the classification of the fracture of the head of the femur classification of fracture of the head of the femur i am not talking about fracture of neck of femur neck of femur has got all different classification that is powell's anatomical and garden i am talking about the fracture of the head of the femur fracture of the head of the femur this part of the head which i am marking with a dot is called as fovea is called as fovea where attached is the ligamentum teres so pipkin classification type 1 when there is fracture in the infrafoveal part type 2 is fracture in the suprafoveal part type 3 is fracture head of femur associated with fracture neck of femur fracture head of femur associated with fracture neck of femur is pipkin type 3 and pipkin type 4 is fracture of head of femur with fracture of the acetabulum fracture of the acetabulum that is pipkin type 
So now we come to the question which was asked in All India 2012. The question was this. A 30 year old male who presents to you with a road traffic accident has got a pain around hip and the attitude of the hip is flexion and external rotation. There is a shortening of 7 cm. What is the most probable diagnosis? And the options were like this. Anterior dislocation posterior dislocation, central dislocation and pipkin type 4 fracture. Now friends, this question also gave one more information that the there is a mass in the gluteal region which is palpable with the movement of the femur, which is palpable with the movement of the femur. Now friends, Look at the question. It says shortening. It says shortening of 7 cm. We know that there is only one condition in which there is lengthening that is anterior dislocation. There is no lengthening so that means anterior dislocation is out. Anterior dislocation is out. Now the head is palpable in the gluteal region. The head is palpable in the gluteal region and not in the per rectal examination and not in the per rectal examination. Now since the head is palpable in the gluteal region we know that it cannot be central dislocation. So central dislocation is also out. We are left with two options Pipkin type 4 and posterior dislocation. Friends we know that it could be posterior dislocation because there is shortening but there is external rotation. There is external rotation. We just talked about that in posterior hip dislocation there is father and that is flexion, adduction and internal rotation. Father is posterior dislocation. But here there is neither father nor faber. In fact there is fur that is FER, flexion and external rotation. Since it is external Internal rotation, we know that it cannot be posterior dislocation. I know that there is not give, they have not mentioned about abduction and adduction, but at least they have told you that it is externally rotated or internally rotated. Since it is externally rotated, we know that it cannot be posterior dislocation. So one method is that you can rule out all the three options and you can mark pipkin type 4 even if you don't know what is pipkin type 4 now we have just discussed what is pipkin type 4 we have just discussed what is pipkin type 4 pipkin type 4 is fracture of head of femur with fracture of the acetabulum with fracture of the acetabulum now it says that there is shortening there is a gluteal mass that is palpable with the that moves with the movement of the femur. I just simulate the condition in front of you. Okay, let's look at it like this. I am seeing the hip posteriorly. This is the posterior part of the hip. Let us say this is the posterior part of the hip. Let's write T on it to avoid confusion. That is posterior part of the hip. There is a mass which is palpable in the gluteal region that moves with the femoral movement. So it has to be mass of the head. Okay, Only that will move with the uh, movement of the femur in the gluteal region. Now, Pipkin type 4 is fracture of head of femur with fracture of acetabulum. That means the as head of the femur has fractured and it has fractured the acetabulum also this part of the acetabulum also which was holding it inside the joint now this part since it has broken it is going it will automatically go into the gluteal region because this was the part which was holding it in the hip joint now this part has broken this part of acetabulum which I have shaded with a black pen has broken and 
some part of head is also broken the remaining part of the head is palpable in the gluteal region and that is moving with the movement of the femur if i were to keep my hand on the gluteal region of the patient i would be able to feel the head of the femur like this you can see on my fingers the impression is being made of the head of the femur and this is what is being felt and moves with the femoral movement friends this is all about hip dislocation i'm just summarizing it once again father shortening posterior dislocation faber lengthening anterior dislocation shortening with per rectal palpation of the head of the femur is central dislocation also called as central fracture dislocation but historically it has been called as central dislocation only these are the three classical presentation whenever you see something non classical something non classical think of something fracture dislocation kind of a thing and i have also explained what is pipkin type 4 i think there shouldn't be any confusion now i would love to discuss any topic that you would like to discuss with me you can always mail me on this mail or you can also comment on the comment box you can subscribe to our video so that you don't miss our video and just remember that our aim is to produce the best doctors out of you that is the reason i am discussing each and every topic which you want me to discuss and it would be a pleasure to discuss any topic that you would like to uh, that you would like pertaining to orthopedics or related subjects you can always write email to me on this email or you can always comment on my uh, inbox you can also subscribe to my channel thank you friends